Hi, Terry here from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is a Christmas card. I've used the Peaceful Deer stamp set together with the Deer Builder Punch. I've also used papers from the Tidings of Christmas design series paper pack. And I've created a spinner tunnel card. On the back is a panel where you can write your message. Now all you need to do is twist the deer around and then close your card. And then you can put it in your envelope and when the recipient receives it and open it, the deer will spin. Isn't that fun? Now when I made this card, I made quite a few mistakes. So hopefully when I show you today's card, I'll omit them all, but we'll see. So let's get started. These are all the measurements you need for all the elements required to create this project. So if you're interested in reproducing it, take a screenshot so you can refer to it later. I'm using Sahara Sand card for the inner layer and this is the layer that's shaped to create the tunnel. Now this is as wide as the card base but it's just a little shorter. Now because I use A4 as my standard card I'm going to score this in centimetres and I've placed my metric plate onto my Simply Scoreboard. I've placed the longest side across the top and I'm going to score down at six centimetres, ten and a half centimetres and fifteen centimetres. Now if your standard card is eight and a half by eleven you want to score down at two and a half inches, four and a quarter inches which is your halfway point and six inches. I've already gone ahead and die cut several mats that are needed for this card. Now I've die cut two basic white ones and I've used the stitched rectangle dies for these and the die is the fourth size down in the largest group. Now I'm going to need that later for my aperture so I'm going to put that to one side. Now one of the white mats will be for the front of the card and the other will be for the back. I've used one of the scalloped contour dies to die cut the remaining mats and it's the second size down. Now I've die cut one in Sahara Sand and two in Cherry Cobbler. Now one of the Cherry Cobbler ones I'm going to use for my aperture frame for inside the card. The other two I've embossed. And I've used the Tasteful Textile 3D embossing folder for this, which adds some beautiful texture to the card. The Sahara Sand mat will go onto the back of the card, and the Cherry Cobbler mat will go on the front. The aperture will be die cut into the centre of the Sahara Sand mat that we scored earlier. Now you've got three vertical score lines and you want to centre the die between the outside score lines. So there's an equal distance at the sides of the die and an equal distance at the top and the bottom. Now you will notice on my die that I've marked the centre point on the top and the bottom. Now the die measures seven centimetres or two and three quarter inches. So your halfway point is three and a half centimetres or one and three eighths of an inch. So all I have to do is line up my marks with my centre score line and just check by eye that the distance at the top and the bottom and the two sides is equal. Then I'll secure it with some washi tape and I'm making sure I stick the washi on the inside because this is the piece that you won't need. So if when you remove the washi it tears, it's no big deal. Once you've run it through your die cutting machine and created the aperture, you can create the frame for it. 
Now I'm going to create the frame from the cherry cobbler mat that I put aside earlier and I'm using the same die that I just used to create the aperture. You want to centre the die as closely as possible on this mat. So take your time and position it and then once again secure it with washi tape sticking it to the inside of the die and then run it through your die cutting machine and then you will have your frame. Now there is a little problem because on the stitched rectangle die you have little dashes, stitch marks and on the scallop contour dies you've got dots and these do not line up it doesn't matter how careful you are to centre the die, you will not get them to line up. There will be one row at least that is misaligned. So to disguise this, I'm going to emboss the frame. And again, I'm using the Tasteful Textile 3D folder for this. And once it's been embossed, you won't notice that you've got a mix of dots and dashes. I was hoping I would be able to create this card mistake free, but no. So although you see me adding the frame now to my card, you don't want to actually do this at this time. You want to stamp the centre of your Sahara sand mat. It's much easier to stamp it while the frame isn't there. And then once you've stamped, which you'll see in a minute, you can add your frame. Now when you apply the glue to the frame, you really want to get it right to the top edge of each of the scallops so you don't get any lifting and catching. Then you can position it over your aperture. To create the spinning mechanism on my card, I'm going to add a length of bead thread to the centre. Now the thread I'm using is a little bit stretchy and is quite fine. I don't know what gauge it is because I lost the label to this reel a long time ago. Now you just want to cut a length that is greater than the depth of your card. Now this is going to be positioned onto the reverse of your card along that centre score line. The first thing I'm going to do is fold on all of the score lines and burnish them with my bone folder. You want to secure the plastic bead thread with some strong tape adhesive and I'm using tear and tape for this. I've added a little strip at the top and the bottom right on top of the centre score line and then I'm removing the backing and I'm going to position the thread. Now I'm pulling it taut so there's no um, give really in the centre. And you want to make sure that that thread is right on the score line. Now once it's secure, I'm going to add some more strips of tear and tape horizontally across the thread. The last thing I want is for the thread to pull out because the card will then be ruined. So you need to make sure that it's very secure. I've added three small horizontal strips. Then I can remove the backing. And then I'm going to take the excess thread at the top and at the bottom and wrap it round and stick it on to these horizontal strips. And then finally I'm going to add three additional strips horizontally at the top and the bottom to secure it further. This way, hopefully, that thread does not stand a chance of being pulled through. I 
I'm going to use strips of printer paper to cover all of the sticky mess on the inside of the card. Now I've cut these to be a little less than the depth at the top and the bottom and a little shorter than this inner section. And I've coloured them using my Sahara Sand Stampin' Right marker just on one side. Now you could use Sahara Sand card for this but it does add to the bulk of the card. So I'm going to add glue to the uncoloured side of the paper and then I'll position one at the top and one at the bottom. You can use your embossing buddy to remove any remaining stickiness that's left and then you want to re-fold on that centre score line. Here is the Peaceful Deer stamp set. Now today I'm using most of the uh, images in the set. I'm also using the Merry Christmas sentiment and the Love and Peace sentiment, as well as this little background image. And finally, here is where you'll see me stamp the centre section of this panel. Now, it's fine with the frame there, you can do it, but it's much easier if you haven't already positioned your frame. Now, I'm going to stamp using Sahara Sand ink and I'm using the little background stamp. I'm going to use a scrap of printer paper just to protect the side sections. I don't want to stamp on those. And I'm also going to be very careful not to stamp on the frame. You need to stamp two deer for the centre deer, the one that spins, one normally and then you need to do a mirror image as well. So you can position these back to back. I'm going to use my Stamparatus to do the stamping for these because it's much easier when you're doing a mirror image. I'll be stamping on normal weight basic white card and I'm going to use my silicone craft sheet to help me stamp the mirror image. Now first of all I've just placed my craft sheet underneath my basic white card and I'm going to stamp my normal deer. So I'll position my stamp, pick it up with the plate, ink it up with early espresso ink and stamp it down. To do my mirror image, I'm going to stamp on the silicone craft sheet and I'm going to ink up my stamp and stamp it down three times so I get a nice juicy impression on the craft sheet. And then I've turned my basic white card over. I'm carefully pressing this over the image and smoothing it and then I'm going to stamp over the top. Now it doesn't matter if that image isn't perfect because we're going to use this one. This is our mirror image. I need to stamp this deer again for the front of the card and I'm still using early espresso ink. Then I need to stamp the standing deer once and the deer that's lying down once. And then there's a little stamp that you can use to add detail to the bodies. So I'm going to add that to each of the deer, again using Early Espresso ink. I'm using Crumb Cake ink to stamp the sentiment for the inside of the card. 
You could use the Harasan, but I think it's a little pale for this. Now I've stamped it so I've got plenty of room around the sentiment to die cut it and the little bunny I'll stamp after it's been die cut. The Merry Christmas sentiment will be stamped on top of the white die cut mat that I'm using for the front of the card and again I'm using crumb cake ink. The bunny will also be stamped on the bottom of the white mat that's going on the back of the card and this is in early espresso ink. I'm using evening evergreen to stamp all the trees on the front die cut mat. I'm using full strength ink for the large tree and then I'm going to stamp off for all the others and I'm just using several of the tree images in the set. I'm then going to use Sahara sand ink to stamp the little shadow underneath where the deer will be positioned. For the antlers I need to stamp two images for each set of antlers and I need three sets so I'm going to stamp six antler sets all together. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to punch them out using the Deer Builder Punch and as you pin punch out one antler it destroys the one next to it so you need separate ones to punch out. I've gone ahead and die cut the sentiment for inside the card and again I've used one of the scallop contours dies and it's the second size up that I've used. And when I die cut it, I made sure that the sentiment was positioned towards the top. I can now stamp the bunny in early espresso ink towards the bottom at the centre. These three deer can be punched out using the coordinating deer builder punch. The other two deer need to be cut out by hand. When you come to punch out the deer that's the mirror image, you have to line up the image on the back. And there you have your mirror imaged deer. I'll also use the punch to punch out the antlers. Now for each pair of antlers that's stamped, I will only be able to punch out one of them. As you punch out each one, it will destroy the second one in each pair. Now you could hand cut each pair of antlers and in that case you would only need to stamp three sets. But because we need identical ones for the mirror image deer, it's going to be very difficult to do that if you're hand cutting them.
I'm firstly going to attach the antlers to the deer that goes in the spinner. Now I'm just adding a dot of glue to the bottom of them and then I'll place my deer's head on top. Then I can flip it over, add glue to the back of the antlers and then glue a second set on top of the first. And these will match perfectly because they were punched out. I'm now going to turn my mirror image deer over so the right side is facing downwards onto my grid paper and I'm going to use one of the lines on my grid paper to show me whereabouts to add my adhesive so that it will hold the spinning thread. Now you want to place adhesive from the top of the ear to the bottom of the foot so that there's as much adhesive as possible attached to the spinning thread. And some of these pieces are tiny. I've added adhesive from the top of the left ear to the bottom of the left foot. I can now bring in my Sahara sand panel and line up that thread with the line on the grid paper so it's going from that ear to the foot and then just press it onto the adhesive. I can then add glue to the back of my deer with the antlers. Don't add glue to the top part of the antlers. I didn't mean to do that here. And then position this onto the mirror image deer and make sure the two deer match exactly. I can then add the remaining set of antlers to my deer that I'll use for the front of the card. And then I can go ahead and add dimensionals onto the back of this one. My card base is in Cherry Cobbler and this is half a standard sheet of card scored in the middle and folded to create a side opening portrait card. Then for the front of the card I have a Sahara sand mat and some of our Tidings of Christmas designer series paper. I also have my die cut panel, my white stamped panel and my deer with the dimensionals on the back. Now for the inside of the card base I have some more of the Tidings of Christmas designer series paper and I've marked the halfway point on the top and bottom edges. Then I have my Sahara star sand layer, two more pieces of the designer series paper for the sides a little cherry cobbler mat to go underneath my sentiment that will go on one side. And then for the back of the card I have my Sahara sand die cut, cut mat and my white mat with the bunny on the bottom. And then I have my two deer that I've hand cut.
And that's my card complete. It's very pretty. Now to make it spin, you just wind up the deer. Now when you close the card, you want to make sure his little tail is pointing to the outside edge. If you have his foot there, that will um, extend past the edge of the card a lot more. Like so. Okay, so if you turn him so his little tail's there, that will just tuck in. I think if you use 8.5 inch by 11 inch card as your standard, you probably won't have that problem because your cards are actually wider than ours. But it's a lovely card. It takes a little while to create, but I think it's worth it. And here's another look at my original card. Now the green I used here is soft succulent. These cards will fit in standard size envelopes, but because they are quite bulky, I would create a box for them. And I'll leave a link at the top of the screen under the eye to another video that shows you how to create a box in the right size. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.